All right, if you just watched my video on um, on basic collisions, then you'll know how to do a basic collision. And I'm just going to expand that concept here and use it in the, my program or my 2D game. And you can see that here we have two enemies that show up. We can fire, but nothing happens. It doesn't detect it. And it doesn't detect when the, we collide with them. So that's what we want to fix here. And to do so, we're going to use the same concept that we just used and we're going to make one assumption before we start. Now the assumption is that every th every object in this frame is actually a rectangle. So remember how we had those two rectangles? We're going to assume this man here is a rectangle. This ghost here is a rectangle. This ghost is a rectangle. So anything that collides is actually two rectangles colliding. So we can think of this whole scenery as those two rectangles moving across the screen. So I'm going to use the same logic I used in the last video. In, in our paint class, we want some variables such as boolean lost is equal to false. We want something to control whether we lost the game or not, right? So we have this boolean lost, and we want to go into our paint method, and we want to do if, well, we don't have to comment this, but if lost, then we want to do something such as uh, system.exit0. We want to exit the game if we lost. So we lost when the enemy hits us. So using our assumption that everything is a rectangle, we can go ahead and get the bounds of everything in our game. So get the bounds basically means that return the uh, dimensions of our rectangle so that we can see if the two rectangles intersect each other. Right now, we're just going to do the same way we did last time. So public rectangle, get bounds and return new rectangle and remember the coordinates goes here so our coordinate is actually x y we call this x y this is what changes and so whoops so to get our width and height we go to our picture so i have here the picture uh, our bullet is 44 by 24 you can see the dimensions here so 44 by 24 and it's going to return this. Now we do the same thing for our other two things that we want to check collisions for. We want to check collisions for the bullet and the enemy and the enemy and our main character. So we put this in here. So, but keep in mind for the dude, for this X, we didn't have this as X, we put this as left. If you watch the video on how I made this, then you'll know why I did this. Left was controlling um, where the character was on the screen, bullet was actually controlling, sorry, X was actually controlling uh, the absolute value, meaning if the uh, screen didn't scroll and the character actually moved, then that's what it was controlling. So we have our dimensions of the main character, 63 by 154, so 63 by 154. We put that in, and then lastly we go to our enemy, and we get what get his coordinates, and 73 by 78, so 73 by 78, and this is also controlled by an X and Y, and we're just changing the X and Y. So now we have three rectangles, one for bullet, one for a dude, and one for our enemy. So we go back to our, remember in the uh, check collisions one, we made a new uh, method, public void check collisions. We can go ahead and do the exact same thing, except there's going to be more than one collision to check here. The concept's the same. So check collisions, and so we call this check collisions every time in the action performed method. Remember the action performed method runs every five milliseconds. So basically calling this check collisions constantly, meaning we're checking collisions constantly. So first thing we do is we create two rectangles. Remember in our game we had two enemies, so EN and EN2. So we create two rectangles, R1 and rectangle R2, and we uh, just go en dot get bounds and we similarly we go en2 dot get bounds so this is en and this is en2 and they are just two objects of this enemy class they're basically two different enemies and now what we have to do next is keep in mind that we had more than one bullet on the screen this bullet we had here it was an array list of bullets. So we had many bullets on the screen, but this array list holds all the bullets we had. So we have to check if all the bullets collide with any of the two enemies. So here in this action perform method, we check we did this to check if they were visible. We're just going to copy this down here. 
So remember this uh, this stores the array. This gets the array list from the dude class, and it uh, goes through each element in the array list, and it stores it as a bullet object, which is exactly what we want here. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to get the rectangle m1 is equal to m dot get bounds. We're going to get bounds of this specific uh, bullet object, and we're going to check if uh, simply enough if r1 dot intersects m1. So meaning if r1 intersects if, if the first enemy intersects the bullet, and similarly else if uh, r2 dot intersects m1. But there's one more thing we have to keep in mind, and it is that we want to also check en dot alive. Remember, alive is holding a boolean. Well, it is alive. It's holding a boolean of whether this current enemy is alive. Because if the enemy is dead, then we don't care about the collision. He's already dead, right? So we want to have these two here. En two dot get alive, and well, if either if this is true, if this is true, then what we want to do is we want to make them make them invisible. So visible is equal to false. Remember, we're only drawing them if they're visible. So, and later on they're going to be removed from the array list anyway. So, we can basically just go en dot is alive is equal to false, and m dot visible is equal to false. All right. So we've made both of them false, and en two dot is alive is equal to false, and m dot visible is equal to false. So this is this controls the collision of our main character, sorry, our bullet and our enemy. Now we want to do our main character and our enemy. So this controls when we lose the game. So here we're simply going to do create another rectangle for our dude, and we're going to go from our dude class, remember, this p is holding our main character, so dude is equal to p dot get bounds, and once we get the bounds of our main character, we can uh, check whether this if d dot intersects, well, r1, which is our enemy, or if it intersects um, d dot intersects r2, which is our second enemy. So if either of these is true, then lost is equal to true. It means you lost the game. And remember, if lost is true, then it's going to exit the game. So at this point, what we've done is we've gone into our uh, each of our classes, and we've returned a rectangle from the class. So the rectangle basically gives you bounds of the, of the image which is your current x, your current y, the width of the image, and the height of the image. And that forms a rectangle. Even though the image itself is not a rectangle, we can assume that for collision purposes, it is a rectangle. So we do this for all of our three um, uh, objects that we have on the screen. And then we create a method here to check collisions. And obviously, your method doesn't have to be in this uh, class. It can be in other classes as well. As a matter of fact, when your game gets big, you'll have to spread it out over different classes. And But for now, we can just uh, loop through the whole array of bullets, and we can check if each bullet collides with each rectangle. So uh, for in this case, we only had one rectangle, or sorry, two rectangles for the two enemies. And we checked if the bullet collides with the enemy in both cases, and we also checked if the main character collided with the uh, either of the two enemies. So we run the program, we see here it's the same so far. Um, we get to our two enemies, now see when I fire, one dies, now when I fire again, the other dies. So simple enough, you couldn't really tell that I made the assumption that they're both, uh, uh, they're, that they're both, everything's rectangle. Now you see when I'm going to hit them, I hit them and the game dies. See, well, it exited, it didn't die. But instead of this, maybe we could put system.out.println, and we could put you sock. Okay, so now let's, let's run it again. Now you'll be able to see when it says that you suck, 
means that you died. So you see right here when I hit it, it starts screaming you suck because lost is true. So at this point, we'd probably want to pause the game and write a big you lost message or retry or something like that. And then it would reset the game. So, well, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I wanted to show. Uh, that's base, that's collision detection implemented into our game. If you had a longer game over multiple levels, obviously you can see how tedious this would be to keep checking for collisions, but obviously you have to. Another note I want to leave you with is uh, think about when we cannot use that assumption that everything is a rectangle. Because here I can use it. You can't tell that that bullet and that uh, enemy is a rectangle. You, you're not able to tell. But if, if, for example, say I had a hill here, and for hill I would have to check if the collision occurred. If I had a hill here, an imaginary hill, then and I, and my code was that when I get to the hill, my y increases, my y value of the main character increases, so that it makes it look like that I'm going over the hill. So say this was the hill, and I wanted to make it look like I'm going over the hill, so my y was automatically increasing, then we can't make the assumption that that hill is a rectangle, because then our character would jump value when it hits it. We'd have to make the shape out, and we'd have to make our x value, or sorry, our y value increase gradually. So that's something to think about when we can't use that assumption, and oftentimes it's harder to uh, implement when we're not using that assumption. But then you'd just have to make a shape. So Java has a lot of these kinds of shapes, this uh, rectangle that I used here. And it has a bunch of shapes like this. And it is under java.awt package. You can check it out. And uh, yeah, so it has a shape, a general shape as well, where you can make any shape. So that's what you'd have to use. But you can use that dot intersects. That's always valid. So that's always what you're going to have to use to check collisions. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say. That's my That's the game. Um, I'll let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them.